hello and everybody welcome back to yet another episode of our series power people which profiles you who source of the music business industry and today on this very special episode we have with us Mr. In, in, in this only you can share you know an example of a brand that has you know six su- you successfully used music to enhance its brand identity and connect with its audience so what are the examples you look forward to on this Sure. So, see, there are multiple. If you, you know, music yeah. has been also a very integral part of advertising, marketing, and communication, right? If yeah. you uh, go back to the eighties and nineties, some of the most catchiest jingles, you know, which we still remember, and there's a lot, lot of nostalgia attached to it. Like the Nirma mm-hmm. commercial was there. There was the Cadbury commercial where the girl is dancing on the cricket field. Um, you know, uh, there was Maggie. There were so many, right? And even if you look at it now. Um, there are lots of brands like coke which has a very popular music ip called coke studio there's nest cafe yeah. which has a very popular music ip called nest cafe basement um mm-hmm. similarly yeah similarly there's mintra which has done some very beautiful integrations on their uh, application and their platform you know using music uh, so there are multiple brands which are doing it and they're doing it very very successfully uh there are so many brands uh, like paytm which has a beautiful mnemonic you know paytm karo and people identify with the brand because of that so music is always yeah like, attractive yeah. tagline yeah. absolutely so music has always been used it's just that you know now people have started recognizing the value of creating original music for uh, in their or building more and more music in their brand strategy because uh the kind of statistics and the kind of consumption of music that we are seeing in india it is absolutely insane you know insane. just to give you a little bit of uh, context annually there are close to 250 billion streams which are happening across different platforms only for music in india you know and there are about 170 million uh, unique subscribers that are streaming music in india 170 million is 12% of india's population right and that number is growing by 20 to 30% year on year every day also if we talk about like these 24 hours will get over there would have been 430 million streams that would have happened in india today right hmm. that 430 million was i think 230 or 260 million 3 years back so in just 3 years that number has doubled and now because of social yeah. media and because of so many other platforms like you know your pocket fms and the streaming music streaming platform the distribution platforms instagram etc uh, music consumption has become so easy like you know say on everyone's fingertips people are listening to music all the time whether they are uh, traveling whether they're in the office whether they are partying whether they're chilling whether they're driving you know mm-hmm. so now i think is is because the market is increasing creator market is increasing listener market is increasing consumption is increasing Like why would the brands not want to latch on to something like this? You know, okay. uh, yeah. it's such a popular mode of consumption. Past day, it has become a global thing now. The market. Absolutely. So, uh, with us that uh, you have joined Hooper AI recently. So, I think it's been how many days? I think I'm gonna. I'm just like a month old in the system. So yeah, I'm a month old. Long. Yeah. Yeah. So, so how is the feeling? Uh, uh, you know, on this new role. So, e- explain us uh, through your, you know, one month journey as a CMO of Uberin. So, uh, to be very honest, I was very excited to join them from the beginning uh, because I've always been very passionate about music, and I've always been very yeah. passionate about marketing, and I've been very passionate about early stage startups. So for me, there were a lot of checkboxing checkboxes that were getting ticked off. Uh, so I was very excited, you know, that I'm going to step into this new role. And uh, I have to say that uh, most of my uh, most of the things that I thought in my head, Mazaiga Karne Me, has all been validated because I think in the first mm-hmm. one month, I have uh, I have you know gone through a lot of the work that they're doing, that the library that they currently have. So just to give you context, Hooper currently has close to twelve thousand five hundred. Tracks in their online library yeah. on the platform, yeah. and that that number is also increasing uh, day by day as we speak. So every day there are new tracks that are getting added, and these tracks actually range across uh, original soundtracks like proper songs, 
there are there's a lot of background music there's a lot of uh, sound effects that we're putting on the platform uh, so it's very exciting because you know we are actually building a product which is such a great tool for creators brands that are creating content for young filmmakers for ott platforms it has completely in my opinion there's nothing like this that that previously existed in india there are similar platforms uh, they're not of indian yeah. origin so in india this is mm-hmm. a first of its kind yeah in india this is a first of its kind platform we have a we have mm-hmm. a very very large network of artists over 6000 artists mm-hmm. that we're working with we're working wow. with over 2 lakh creators uh, who are you know using mm-hmm. hoopers uh, platform to source music uh mm. so we've complete i think we have democratized uh music creation and music use of you know royalty free and copyright free music uh by a large by by you know a large uh, measure because yeah. nothing like this existed to creators and today creators mm. are able to monetize their content uh, because platforms like hooper exist where they can source yeah. a lot of copyright free music um, Yeah, so I'm really excited because yeah, yeah. So yeah, on that, yeah. AI, you know, navigate the complexities of you know music licensing, as you mentioned, to ensure brands have access to high quality and legally compliant music for their campaigns or for you know the promotions they do. So, what's your take on this? Okay, so to put it very simply, um, from Hooper side, there are no complexities because all of the okay. music that is on our platform is proprietary. It is created by our artists, it's commissioned by us, and it is created for the platform. Uh, so we're not sourcing from any third-party vendors or any, or we're not using any AI tools to create this. All of this is proprietary and created for Hooper by artists that are being commissioned and paid by Hooper. uh yes so the ownership uh, of this music lies with us therefore the licensing and distribution also lies with us uh so there are no complexities any brand that wishes to engage with uh, hooper as a platform uh, just has to sign up with us uh, and you know they are free to use these tracks in whatever way of course there are different uh, internal uh, intricacies and nuances when it comes to using content uh, using music for digital promotions or using it for broadcast for live yeah. events yeah uh, but all of that is something that you know uh, comes up in discussion with brands but there is actually just just one. there is actually no issue from uh, from the brand side and it's very very streamlined and and hooper sort of makes it very very easy so there is no complexity as such um, all the music that we uh, give to our, to our brands and our uh, users is all proprietary and owned by us So, what's your take on you know music right management of the artist in this time? It is a very you know crucial role in this time. I I I was reading somewhere regarding this the music right management. So, what's your take on this, Vikasta? Um. So, see, this is a topic that's actually uh very touchy, and it you know so and at the same time you know sometimes you're damned when you speak and sometimes you're damned when you don't. Yeah. Uh, yeah but but i think uh, you know as someone who uh, so uh, even hooper for that matter is a very artist first and artist led platform yeah um uh, so i think on on this i'm just going to kind of sum it up in one sentence and say I, that i think you know that we sort of side more with the artists when it comes to uh, uh, music rights management yeah i oh. think they should be fairly compensated for the work that they do yeah uh, and uh, even in the long term i think uh, you know they should definitely earn uh, royalties from from the music that they create mm-hmm. that's yeah. great that's so great. so i think yeah so we're always on the artist side right? <laughs> <laughs> so you know what are the emerging trends do you see currently you know shaping the marketing landscape and how is hooper you know positioned to leverage these kind of trends in this time what do you think about it? um so there are two three large trends one is that we are seeing a sudden surge of a lot of regional music yeah. um on social media and social media largely is actually the universal uh, you know all the universal trends around marketing brands discovery everything is now related to social media like that mm-hmm. that's sort of the universe out of which all of us are operating mm-hmm. um so we've seen a huge uptake in bhojpuri music in yeah. haryanvi music 
we are seeing a huge uptick in in uh, also some of the southern topics like telugu music is suddenly uh, up and out there and there's a lot of content getting created we're seeing huge uh, increase in the creator engagement and creator content on uh, regional platforms uh, not regional but uh, vernacular uh, social media platforms like the moj and the chingaris of the world i think uh, we are seeing some really good creators and some you know really engaging good or bad i don't know but really engaging content coming out of these uh, platforms and i think a lot of brands are sort of latching on to it uh right. so that's that's one very interesting trend and we are also very excited because we are commissioning a lot of regional music in that upcoming uh, releases hmm. uh that's great so in the in, in, in the, you know music business thing uh, in this uh, time how does you know hopper uh is generating the revenue streams and revenue generation how do how, what is the creative process to it uh if you can just repeat that question what do you mean by the creative process the creative process uh, like the you know the uh, collaboration between the artist and the hooper so what is the process of you know okay. the revenue generation you know i'm sure. sure so so revenue generation is actually a separate uh, i'll so i take both the questions separately because yeah. the revenue generation is is yeah. one aspect mm-hmm. and the artist uh, collaborations is one aspect yeah. uh so the artist collaborations primarily happens on a, a commissioning basis okay so uh so there is a lot of data that we are mining on the platform uh so when we look at the kind of downloads that are happening when we look at the kind of music that our users are coming online and streaming it gives us some insight into what kind of content people want to see on the platform yeah. what kind of content is performing for us on the platform at the same time there are some universal trends which are happening outside of the hooper universe like i told you on social media there is haryanvi music that's suddenly trending there is telugu there is a lot of regional content that is coming up there's a there is a requirement for a lot of regional music also which is suddenly dropping right so uh, when we are collaborating or when we are commissioning with artists we look at all of these trends so we look at the micro trends which are in the hooper space the platform and the universe and then we look at the macro trends which we observe on social media so when you combine both so you add a and you add b it gives you a c so then we understand that okay this is the kind of music that we want to commission for the next set of releases and that's how the artist collaborations and then we see what are the kind of artists we already have in our network and whether we need to scout for more artists or not okay. so that's how the artist space or the artist side of things mm-hmm. work uh in terms of monetization so it's all platform led Okay. Uh, there are different kinds of people who come on the platform and uh, sign up or subscribe with Hooper. One is your typical uh, creators. So there are a lot of nano and micro creators uh, who are now subscribed with Hooper. So like I told you, we have close to uh, two lakh creators that are signed up on the platform. Mm-hmm. Uh, out of which, actively, there are about twelve or thirteen thousand creators which are working with us on a month-on-month basis. Okay. Right. so these include your micro nano creators you know who have followers under 25000 on social media mm-hmm. and then there are your the you know uh, uh, macro and the sorry the the mega creators and the macro creators which have a much higher following on social media so there are some very uh, big names like uh, there's a ranveer brand there's flying beast there are a bunch of such uh, people who are yes who are subscribed there's uh, kunal vijaykar so there are a bunch of very ashish vidyarthi a bunch of very interesting uh, uh, influencers content creators who are using hooper as a platform to create their content so that's one part that's that's you know the individual uh, content creators then there are brands and agencies that uh, can also subscribe on the hooper platform so here the the ticket size is a little uh, bigger but because they are managing multiple uh, channels and they are creating a lot of content on social media for example you can get a cosmetic brand hmm. that cosmetic brand is daily churning out some content either on social media or on their digital app hmm. or on different marketplaces and stuff like that so they they are also tied up with uh, with hooper there are many broadcasters and content creators so pocket fm is a client uh, hd smartcast uh, is a client So there are a bunch of such people who are working with us. We work with Marico. We are working with Mintra. Wow! So these are some of the bigger brands that we. So these are some of the bigger brands that we uh, work with. 
Okay. So these are the two monetization uh-huh. channels, brand. Uh-huh. And we also do a lot of bespoke and uh, customized uh, work with brands, which is known as Uber Brand Solutions, okay. where we work with them in a more of a consultative space. Uh-huh. Uh, if they have a certain brand challenge that they wish to address and they want to do it with a music strategy in place, uh-huh. we sort of help them with that as well. Yes, sir. You just yeah. mentioned on the you know influencer thing. So influencer marketing is playing a very huge role in this time. So what's your yes. take on you know influencer marketing in music marketing? What with what yeah. is the main Yeah. So uh, see, influencers are a very important yeah. and integral part of the entire promotional universe now, and we can't shy away from that fact. I know there are still people in denial. Yeah. But I think we've got to give them. I I think we've got to give, give credit where it is due, and these people are doing a really good job. I feel some of them. So um, yeah, having said that, see, like I told you, we already have our own set of uh, creators that are either a part of the Hooper community or who are using our platform or who are associated with us in some other uh, way or form, right? Um, so we take uh, these creators very, very seriously. In fact, we have a very solid community and a network. And whenever we are releasing our music, we leverage uh, this community to help us promote that music because, I, like I told you, you know, we're artists first, and we want mm-hmm. the artists' work also to get well promoted, and and you know, uh, we want them to get maximum visibility and eyeballs. That's mm-hmm. number one. Number two, the brands that we work with. Mm-hmm. Uh, we sort of also uh, give them access to uh, this creator network and we help them also sort of reach out to as many people as possible uh, through obviously some sort of music integrations or some kind of trending yeah. activations mm-hmm. for their yeah. brand but using Hooper's music. Yeah, but using Hooper's music. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, so these are a few things that we do and we can't, we can't take away from the importance of influencers. Uh, mm-hmm. That's for sure. I think they're very, very integral to... Uh, anything becoming a trend or anything becoming peppy and uh, mm-hmm. anything becoming in demand overnight, you know. Mm-hmm. If you recall, I think back in the 90s, early uh, 2000s, if a brand really wanted to become popular, they would have had to spend a lot of money and for three to six months continuously, you know, you have to put your ad on television mm-hmm. every day in the prime time slot. Yeah. Just to become popular because yeah. that's the kind of frequency it requires. Now imagine you're on Instagram. Within 24 hours, something suddenly becomes trending and popular. Trending. So that's how much, yeah. So that's and how much the, the marketing timeline has also, And for the music community also nowadays, the independent artist also doesn't need any, you know, record labels to, you know, promote exactly. them on YouTube. So it, 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 exactly, and it totally democratizes, uh, you know, the outreach and visibility for artists also. Right mm-hmm. now, they don't need a label to come in every time and promote them. Yeah. So earlier that you know that whole feeling that it's a very impenetrable industry yeah. and only some people who are lucky will make it to Bombay and they will sing mm. and they will do playback. That thing has completely been shattered. That you know, that whole system, that hierarchy, that food chain has completely been shattered. Yeah. Now somebody who's as small, uh, you know, like a small singer from an indoor can also trend uh, mm. as much as an artifact yeah. trending. You know, maybe more. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So uh, we'll I think it's a good time, time for him. <laughs> yeah. I think it's a good time for the influencers and the independent artists, the indie music, basically. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So, what's your take on, you know, AI music? Are you guys use, have you used AI in some sort of thing? Because it's not, I, I would say it's a, it has its own advantages and disadvantages. But I think I have listened that it, 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 it it's very helpful. So what's your take on AI? Absolutely. and music? Yeah, yeah. So I agree with you. AI is a very helpful uh, tool. But see, AI at the end of the day is a tool and it's nothing more than an enabler. Okay. And anything that AI creates is basically a derivation of the millions of data points that are already uh, already present in the in the the internet space or the web universe as we call it, right? It's always going to be a derivation. You want something original, you have to go to an actual artist or an actual composer or an actual singer. AI aapko sirf However, having said that, AI can be very, very, uh, can be a very, very interesting and important tool 
टू क्रिएट यू नो लेट्स से डिफरेंट डिफरेंट वर्जन ऑफ वन थिंग सो let's say today nes cafe has a very interesting the pub par a pub jingle that comes yeah. everywhere the jingle yeah yeah so yeah. now if they have to base jingle or a base melody or a base composition ready they can you can always use ai to tweak it and give it a new flavor every time yeah. and for that you don't need to go back to an artist each and every time so you want to make something trend on social media and you want to make 20 versions of it and you want to target it to different audiences and you want to do a different thing for monsoon valley coffee and you want to do something different for an iced coffee mm-hmm. something different for a garam shimla valley coffee mm-hmm. so you can always make different versions of the same thing yeah. that ai can do for you or yeah. ai is definitely an enabler on that front mm-hmm. but when you want something original you have to go back to an artist yeah you're right So, uh, with this, yeah. how you see Hooper AI in next five years, and how do you, you know, envision music business industry in next five years? What's your take? <laughs> so, um, honestly, it's very uh, difficult to predict what's going to happen after five years because now here things are changing every six yeah. months in terms of technology, mm-hmm. in terms of you know uh, the kind of platforms that we have access to, and now with AI coming in, we don't know if six months baad kya hoga. Mm-hmm. uh but having said that uh, if you ask me for a for a long term vision uh, for hooper i think hooper is going to be that one go to platform for any artist uh, who is wishing to create new kind of music or wishing to collaborate with other artists or any brands that are looking for any music led strategy um or you know anybody who wants to sort of uh, work in the space of music and also wants to monetize their content and get fairly paid for for the work that they are doing so i think at some point uh, hooper is going to become a marketplace mm-hmm. where uh, there are going to be artists there are going to be creators and then and then there are going to be brands so yeah. it's somewhere in the at the cusp of music technology community uh, and music of course mm-hmm. yeah. yeah so lastly my question i think that's my Yeah. So, what advice you know you have for the emerging marketing leaders? So, see, I would like to say a couple of things. Like, I studied. So, when we studied marketing back in college, it was very textbookish and it was very theoretical, and there were loads of principles that had taught you, right? Uh, but, um, but I think, I think a real marketer and a good marketer is someone who always keeps their eyes and ears open. Yeah. Uh, so you have to be very, very clued into um, what is changing on the social front, what is changing in terms of technology, what kind of uh, media is your audience consuming. So you have to be very, very tapped into the day-to-day changes that are happening. So I follow like fifty creators, hmm. where I don't have a personal interest in uh, the. the the area you know in which they are creating content but i still do it because it helps me to stay abreast with the times and yeah, understand yeah. what kind of content is yeah. people are liking and what kind of content is relevant because that keeps me more tuned in as a marketer so i think if that's very important because ab hum hawa mein kamre mein baith ke you know we can't think and we can't come up with campaigns we don't have that we don't have that uh, liberty because it's so competitive out there and every brand is trying to be seen or trying to make themselves uh, visible so my only advice to the new marketers would be that you know just keep your eyes and ears open be observant and keep upskilling yourself every few years because uh, things are changing very very rapidly uh, jahan pehle 3 saal mein aap ek course karte the now i think every 6 months or every year you need to do something or the other and kind of upskill on your technical as well as your soft skills when it comes to marketing so thank you so yeah, i think that would be my Thank you so much. Vincent, Thank you so much for your time and congratulations on your new role as the CMO. All the very best for your future. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. This was a great interaction. I love it. Thank you. Thank you.